I wanted to um, talk a little bit about the statistics so when we talk when we think about teen dating violence. So nationally, one in three adolescents, one in three adolescents um, ages, I think it's 13 to 21, are going to be a victim of teen dating violence. And that includes emotional abuse, sexual abuse, or physical abuse. So that number is extremely high. Um, it's, it's concerning, which is why we're here today to talk a little bit more about it. Um, LGBTQ young students have higher rates of abuse. And if you are um, in an unhealthy or an abusive relationship, you have a higher risk for substance abuse, for eating disorders, for further risky sexual behavior or further domestic violence. And that's because a lot of times substance abuse and eating disorders are a way for them to cope with the violence that they are receiving. And um, the further domestic violence is because if they're in an unhealthy or an abusive relationship and that's all they know, they continue to be in abusive relationships throughout their life because they don't know how to be in a healthy relationship. There are higher rates of pregnancy or getting a sexually transmitted infection. And there are unfortunately higher rates of attempting suicide, again, as a way to kind of escape the abuse or deal with the depression of what they might be going through while they're, while they're there. And I'm starting out with these statistics to really wanting you to know what the warning signs are, what the abuse is, so you can recognize it and, um, and hopefully be there as a support system for your team. I'm just gonna check and make sure there are no questions yet, but please feel free again to ask any questions. And lastly, 58% of parents cannot identify warning signs of teen dating violence. Again, I think that's one of the reasons that I'm here today is to help you not be that 58%, for you to be the other 42% uh, that do know the warning signs. So I want to ask you, what percentage of teens who have experienced dating abuse have ever told anybody? So if you could put in the chat what you think is the percent of teens that actually disclose what they're going through. Is it 10%, is it 20%, is it 80%? What do you think? All right, I see a 20%, 10%. All right. So, Luckily, it's a little bit higher than that, but still not that high. It's 33% of anyone who's dealing with teen dating abuse decides to tell anybody. So that's only a third of our teens who are dealing with something very traumatic feel comfortable coming forward or moving forward. So later we're going to talk about what are some strategies for you to open up that conversation if you are uh, worried about that. So this, uh, this video that I'm showing here, it was made by middle school students at Martin Luther King Middle School, and they won a prize at last year's contest. Are you able to hear it? The music? I'm gonna go hang out with my friends. See you later. Yes. Now, now we can. Yeah. A little low. Sorry, I can't call tonight. I have a ton of homework. That's totally okay. I'm so nervous for my audition. You can do it. You'll be great. If you're experiencing abuse or know someone who is, contact the Montgomery County Family Justice Center at 240-773-0444. So now I want us to talk about what we like to call the relationship spectrum. So this is when we have a relationship and of course we want, we want everyone to always be on that healthy part of the line. 
sometimes relationships can get unhealthy. There's a breakdown of communication. And then a lot of, of some more than we would hope, um, relationships beca can become abusive. So I want us to go through a short activity to, I'm going to give you some examples of what a healthy relationship is, an unhealthy relationship, and an abusive relationship. And I want you to tell me what each statement represents. So my partner listens to me when I'm upset. Is this healthy, unhealthy, or abusive? Healthy. Good, yes. This is definitely a healthy thing to, um, to, to be experiencing. So my partner tells me I'm ugly and that I'm lucky to have them. Is this healthy, unhealthy, or abusive? I see an unhealthy and I see an abusive. This is abusive. So this is somebody that is telling them that they're ugly, that they're lucky to have you, that they're using some manipulation tactics um, by saying this. My partner doesn't let me spend time with my friends. Is this healthy, unhealthy, or abusive? Unhealthy? So this is also abusive. Um, one of the tactics that we'll talk a little bit later is um, isolation. When somebody doesn't let other people, their partner spend time with other people to do activities and they really just kind of keep them uh, to themselves. My partner doesn't listen to what I want to do. All right, this is unhealthy, good. My partner tries to make all of the decisions. All right, I see that somebody says abusive. And this is a little tricky. Um, I, I'm using this as tries to make all of the decisions. And so if they're trying to make the decision, all the decisions, it's still a bit in that unhealthy character. If they do make all of the decisions, then it falls into the abusive category. So that one's a little tricky. Me and my partner, um, sometimes me and my partner get bored with one another. Is this healthy, abusive, or unhealthy? So this statement is, yes, it is healthy. It's fine to get bored. That's totally normal. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we get bored and we don't want to spend time with each other, and that's fine. So now we're going to move into a little bit more about what those each of those categories are. All right. So with healthy relationships, they're um, about respect, they're about good communication, trust, honesty, and equality. And I want us to make sure that we know that equality is a really big part of relationships because not one person has more power over the other person or is worth more than another person. An unhealthy relationship is when you're not communicating well, when somebody's being disrespectful, when they're being untrustworthy, dishonest, um, this is when name calling can come into play and when one person is trying to take control over the other person. An abusive relationship is when somebody is shifting the blame on something. Well, you did this and that's why I have to react this way, right? They're shifting the blame of, of what they're doing of their behavior. There's isolation, there's m manipulation, and this is also when things become violent. checking the time. I'm going to skip that video. So what is dating abuse? Um, a lot of times we think dating abuse is that physical violence or the verbal abuse. And those are definitely types of dating violence. And, I, and those are examples of what dating violence is. But for the rest of the presentation, I want us to really focus on power and control. 
So dating abuse is a pattern of behaviors one person uses to gain and maintain power and control over their partner. And this can be during the relationship, while they're dating, while they're hanging out, what, however you want to define what dating is. It can also continue to after the relationship is over. Um, that's when, you know, the abusive partner can't, can't let go. Um, so they continue abusive behavior, whether it's manipulation or threats, um, intimidation against the other person, because they don't want to let go of that power and control. So I'm going to outline six different types of violence. But before we do that, I'd like you to chat in what you think those six different types of violence are. So what are the different six different types of violence? Oh, and while you're thinking about that, I forgot about this slide. The dating of violence occurs in both opposite and same-sex couples, and any gender can be abusive, right? So a lot of times we think stereotypically that the male is the abuser and the female is the victim. That's definitely, I would say, the majority. However, girls can be abusers and boys can be victims. It can also happen in same-sex couples as well. So I see um, that somebody wrote in emotional abuse. Absolutely, that's definitely one of them. Uh, physical abuse, great. What are other different types of, of abuse? So um, like Debbie said, there is physical abuse and this is any intentional use of physical force with the intent to cause injury. This can be hitting or shoving or biting, strangulation, kicking, throwing objects or using a weapon. So anything physical. And a lot of times that's what we think when we think of domestic violence, when we think of dating violence, when we think of relationship abuse, we think of physical violence. Then of course we have our emotional or verbal abuse. Other people call it mental abuse, um, psychological abuse. And this is anything non-verbal. Right, so threats, insults, constant monitoring. We've got humiliation and intimidation. We've got gaslighting and love bombing and isolation. So gaslighting um, is when people play mind games on somebody. So they may say, oh, you know, that didn't really happen. Or, oh, you forgot that we said we were gonna do this but they're always making the, the victim feel like they're going crazy. Love bombing um, is kind of a newer term, and that's when one person shows intense affection very, very quickly. They've known each other for two days, and all of a sudden it's, I can't live without you. Oh my gosh, you're the one for me. You're my dream. You know, We're going to be together forever. I see you in my life forever. It's just intense emotional attachment um, to the other person. And this can be very dangerous because then it leads to manipulation further down the line when the violence increases. The victim may feel like, oh, but they, you know, they care about me so much and they love me so much and they express it all of the time that this abuse, this, this, I'm not gonna pay much attention to it because they do love me so much. So that can be very dangerous. Isolation is something that happens in all relationships. I'm going to share a couple of examples of what we've heard from MCPS students regarding teen dating violence. And isolation is one of them where they won't let them be on a sports team or hang out with their friends or sit with them at lunch, um, where they have to give up, where they, they're forced to give up activities that they used to enjoy, all because that abuser, again, wants that power and control over the other person. Then we also have sexual abuse, and this is any action that pressures or coerces someone to do something sexually that they don't want to do. This can include rape and sexual assault. It can also include any type of coercion to do something you don't want to do, unwanted hugging, touching, kissing, restricting access to birth control, stealthing. Stealthing is um, an act where one partner, if, if two people are having sex, where one partner takes the condom off without the other person knowing. 
um, and that is a, a form of sexual abuse. Financial abuse um, in the in the realm of teen dating violence relationship is using money to have control, such as giving gifts with strings attached. You know, I gave you your phone, so now I get to read all your text messages. I did this, so now you have to do this. Um, it can also include letting uh, the person have a job or sabotaging their employment or stealing money from you, anything that's related to money. Then we have stalking. Um, and this is being repeatedly watched or followed, monitored, harassed. This happens during the relationship and also continues after the relationship has ended again because the abuser doesn't want to give up that power and control. Then we have technology abuse. And this is the use of technology or social media to intimidate or harass. I know that I'm on, I'm on my phone all the time. Um, People can send threatening text messages or excessive text messages. Where are you? Who are you with? You said you were going to be home right now. I don't trust you. You said you were going to come over, over and over and over and over again. Demanding passcodes to the phone, deleting contacts. I don't want you to be friends with this person anymore. Delete, delete, delete. Um, using all those different apps to track your whereabouts, Life360 or Find My Friends, all of those different apps. Um, can lead to that technology abuse. Does anybody have any questions about these six different types of abuse that we see a lot of the time? Again, feel free to ask questions throughout. So this is another video from students at Sherwood High School. Chicken sandwiches? Smile. Dude, I'm they're down. Hot chicken sandwiches. I'm down. Chicken Dude, I'm waffle fries, no. I think I did really good. If that's I, I don't know. I don't know how I did. Wait, hold on one second. At least a B. One second. Yeah. Oh, that's another pick. I don't know the right answer. It's like, if you fail, fail. I just really don't know what to say. It's like our four time. Is everything okay? whatever yeah david i saw him in the woods and like so as you can see that was an example of um that technical technological abuse that we were talking about where he was getting incessant text messages over and over and over again and it was isolating him and it was pulling him away from his friends so just really quickly a little bit more on technology abuse is letting your team know these kind of ground rules when we talk about technology and when we talk about social media but to not share their passwords or passcodes with friends um, and their dating partner. We don't know why they need access. Um, of course, you know, you can share and say, you know, watch something together on your phone, but don't give them those passcodes. Not to share their location um, on sharing apps. There's no reason to, for a friend to know where you are at all times. Um, encourage your team to remove the location information from their photos before sharing them online. Um, Help your teen establish secure passwords uh, and privacy settings on their social media accounts. All of the, the social media accounts have these different privacy settings and that we encourage you to go through those privacy settings with them um, so they're not sharing too much information. And letting them know to review the photos um, that are being posted of them online. Remind them that people online can be fake. Um, if they say that they're meeting these people, if they're gaming, if you're, they're doing something, that it's very easy um, to be catfished and to meet and to meet people who you think are your age um, online. And tell them, of course, never, ever, ever to meet a stranger they meet online alone. That is um, one thing that I cannot stress enough. So we go to the schools in Montgomery County and we talk about teen dating violence and something else that we talk about is consent when it comes to sexual activity. And these are the things that we stress. 
that consent is vocal. Um, we really want to make sure that people know that if somebody doesn't say anything, that that, that does not mean consent. Um, if, if they are um, scared or if they're crying or if they're trying to leave the room or if they're frozen, if they're not saying yes or no or something of that effect, that there is no consent. That it's continual. Somebody might say yes at the beginning when you start kissing or doing whatever. And, and then they, you know, kind of shift away, making sure that that consent is ongoing throughout whatever they have decided to do. Making sure that they're both sober and alcohol or drugs are not involved. Um, making sure that one of them and both of them, actually, both of them are conscious. And um, that the consent was given freely, right? There was no threats. There was no intimidation. There was no coercion, but that was freely given from both parties. And it's clear that you've said yes to this. That doesn't mean you say yes to everything, but that you've said yes to this one thing. And then there needs to be more conversations around consent. In addition, and I don't think I have it here, which I will add it later, is that um, consent can be reversed. It can be revoked. If somebody says yes to something and they start fooling around and doing whatever, and then one person changes their mind, consent can be taken away. And, and that means that the other person can't continue. Um, where somebody might change their mind or they've had enough or they don't want to um, anymore, they don't want to continue more, then that means that consent can be taken away. And that's very important to remember. I wanted to really quickly just show you this power and control wheel when we talk about teen dating violent relationships. The print is a little bit small, but all of these are different things that um, the teens are going through when they're in an abusive relationship. So there's anger and emotional abuse. Um, there's using social status. There's intimidation and minimizing and denying and blaming the abuse. There are threats. There's sexual coercion there's isolation, and there's peer pressure. So it's a very complicated thing. Um, and what happens in an abusive relationship is that usually the victim does care about the abuser. And so they want to push all these bad things away and focus on anything that's good in the relationship and saying, I can help them change. I can make this relationship better. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the warning signs that someone may be experiencing abuse. So if you want to, um, in the chat, just for a second, type in what you think some warnings are, warning signs are for someone who may be experiencing abuse. What do you think? Uh, a victim might be showing outwardly if they're going through an abusive relationship. So I see isolation. Yeah, they're not spending as much time with friends and family. They're not doing the things that they used to in love. They're changing habits. They are acting differently. They're not doing the same thing. They're not following the same routine that they've had. Really good example. So they also might be apologizing for their partner's behavior. Oh, you know, you saw him push me, but that's because he didn't do well on his chemistry exam, right? They're, they're apologizing for the way the other person is acting. Their loss of interest in hobbies, they're spending less time with friends and family. They're worried about upsetting or making their partner angry. They're checking their phone constantly. They're answering the phone quickly. They want to make sure that they don't make that other person angry. Their weight or their appearance may have changed. Um, they may be dropping weight or gaining weight. Their abuser might be telling them what they're allowed to wear. They may start doing worse in school. Of course, they may have injuries or bruises. Um, or in the summer, they're wearing long sleeves or wearing scarves to cover up those injuries. They're constantly responding to their partner's texts or calls. And they're just being more critical of themselves. They may be depressed or anxious or have really low self-esteem. I also see here introvert. Yeah, they may be pulling inward and not wanting to spend time with others, either because their abuser is isolating them or because their self-esteem has been beaten down. They've been hearing from their abuser. No one will love you but me. 
I'm the only one for you. You're worthless. No one else would love you but me. So they're starting to pull in because of that verbal abuse. Here is a video made by students at Clean Branch High School. What's, What's wrong, wrong with you? you? Why are you always so sensitive? Stop, Stop eating, eating so, so much. much. Don't, Don't you want to look like her? This was your fault, fault, not mine. I'm the, I'm best, the best you'll, you'll ever, ever get. get. Hey. Hey, what's up? Wait, are you okay? What is that on your face? It's nothing, I'm fine. No, it's not fine. What happened? He hit you again, didn't It's he? really not a big deal. Just leave it alone. Natasha. Oh, look, he texted me. I told you everything would be fine. He texted me. I'm sorry about earlier. I promise I'll be better. Oh, like you said last time and the time before that. And listen. I promise I'll be okay. I love him and he loves me and that's all that matters. I promise it won't be like last time. Dating abuse is never okay. If you or anyone you know is experiencing domestic violence, please call the Montgomery County Family Justice Center. So I also want to talk about warning signs from someone who may be mistreating their partner. They may be texting and calling their partner constantly. They may be jealous and insecure. Uh, they may be name calling their partner, making false accusations about what's going on. They may blame others for their own feelings, for their own actions. They're isolating their partner. They're basically being physically violent. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a punch or a hit. It could be um, grabbing someone's hand really forcefully or possessively putting their arm around somebody. They're possessive. They're pressuring the other person to have sex. These are all examples of what an abuser might be doing or might be acting. Tell us about your boyfriend. Hey, well, um, when I first met Mark, it was love at first sight. From that moment, I knew I would do anything for him. For example, um. He worked with this guy that I don't really trust, so I started driving to work and picking him up so I could be sure that he'd be okay. And now I keep an eye on his phone to see if he or anyone else weird is texting him or whatever. He can be naive sometimes, so just to be safe, I have him call me every hour so I know where he is and who he's with. <laughs> he's my everything. So as you can see from that video, he was saying, you know, he is naive. So I have him check in on me every hour. I make sure I drop him and pick him up from work. He's being very possessive about, um, about his boyfriend, about his partner. Now we go into the schools and talk about teen dating violence with um, high school students. And these are some of the things that they themselves are reporting in our community. My ex said he would kill himself if I broke up with him. My friend really liked her boyfriend. He wanted to have sex. She wanted to wait. One night he forced her. He said to her, what's the problem? We're already in a relationship. I've seen plenty of the controlling who you're friends with. My friend was physically abused by her boyfriend in ninth grade. I saw my friends being in a toxic relationship. His girlfriend used to beat him when she did not like sex. I and friends have experienced love bombing. It overall makes you feel guilty for leaving or setting boundaries since they convince you no one will love you like them. My friend used to be hit by her boyfriend. He would also control what she wore and what she did. My friend asked me to walk her home because someone was stalking her. So I wanted to just really think about a lot of times we think, oh, this can't be going on in our community. Um, you know, this this happens in other places. But these are things that the students are seeing in school and with their friends right here in Montgomery County. So now we're gonna get to the informational part, how to help your friend, how to help your team if they're being abused. 
first, you want to actively listen and you want to validate their feelings. You don't want to interrupt them while they're sharing their story. They may not share the whole thing with you right away, but we really want you to just listen to what they're saying. It's going to be very, very hard for them to come forward and uh, and share what's going on. And so you want to validate, I believe you, I'm so sorry this is happening to you, um, those kind of affirming statements. We want you to be sensitive. We don't want you to accuse. We don't want you to diagnose. Um, we don't want you to, you know, jump into that, that problem solving right away. Really just kind of sit with it and really listen to what they're saying. Of course, tell them that it's not their fault. You can share some of the information here that it's happening everywhere in this country, in the world. You want to empower them to make decisions. So what's happening in an abusive relationship is that abuser is taking all that power and control. What you want to do, what a supportive friend wants to do, what we do at the Family Justice Center is we empower them to make the decision, right? We don't want to tell them, break up with them, right? Of course, that's what we want them to do. But we want to give them those tools and those resources to make that decision on their own. If you tell them that to break up with them and they still care about them, unfortunately, they're not going to listen to you. They're going to think, oh, you don't understand. But we want you to be able to give them the right information so that they can come to that decision on their own. And state the facts from your observation. Hey, I noticed that they text you a lot and you get kind of nervous when you get their text messages. Or, you know, I saw that, I heard that they yelled at you. I heard it from down here. State those facts as being, that's, that's unhealthy. That's abusive. Really just focusing on what behavior you see, if, you're, if you see anything. All right. So make sure you have access to, to information um, that includes what dating violence is, what the hotlines are, what the local resources are. Um, what I'll do is I will follow up with the organizers of this to make sure that you all have the information for the Family Justice Center and for hotlines as well. They may not listen. Um, they may get angry. That's natural. I know, I'm sure you all are very familiar with your teens getting angry at you. But just let them know that you that they have your continued support. Um, they may not be ready to break up with their that person right away, but eventually, hopefully, they will. And just let them know that that support is ongoing. And let them know that your safety is there is is of course your number one priority. Here are some examples of what you can say. You can say, you know, I'm worried about you. Um, and I'm worried about your safety. You deserve to be treated with respect. I know you care about them, but I care about you. The stuff going on between the two of you isn't normal relationship behavior. And I have some resources here that I'd like you to read. So you might also be the parent of somebody who is mistreating their partner. So what do you do? How do you deal with that? Choose the right time to have a discussion. Um, don't do it when they're angry. Don't do it when they're about to go out the door to sports practice. Make sure that you have time. It's quiet. Both of you are in a good mood before you come You talk about it. Be direct, be firm and clear about what you've seen. You know, I heard you on the phone with them the other night and that that wasn't that wasn't good. I don't like the way you were talking to them. Or, um, you know, I noticed that you're texting them all the time. You got to give them some space. Be firm in what you've seen. Talk to them about what a healthy relationship is and what an unhealthy relationship is. They may not know. Um, when we do these presentations in school, we've had a few young people come up to us and say, oh, I didn't know. I was, you know, I wasn't supposed to text them so much. I just thought that, you know, I wanted to know what they were doing all the time. So they may not know what a healthy relationship is. So you need to let them know. Never argue with their abusive actions. They may try to blame the other person. They may try to say, oh, I had a really bad day and it's not a big deal. Mm -mm. Their behavior, their abusive behavior is what it is. 
and to never argue with it. Tell them that the behavior is their responsibility. You, of course, you want to avoid making judgmental comments about them as a person. You want to focus on that behavior and then don't validate um, their attempt to blame others. Here are some examples of what you can say to them. You seem to be treating the partner disrespectfully. Are you aware you're speaking that way? Your actions are not healthy and normal in this relationship. You need to treat anyone you're dating with respect. And I want you to look over these questions and think about how you treat them. So, and this is when you would give um, examples of questions. Sorry about that, Kevo. Because we are short on time, I'm going to pass over these scenarios because I wanted to just really quickly focus on some legal actions that um, parents can take um, with peace and protective orders. So this is where you would take out a peace or protective order. The abuser may be ordered to stop threatening or committing the abuse, um, stay away from the person's home or school, have not, not have any contact with, um, with the victim or their family members. So the way in Montgomery County, the way it works is based on the abuser's age. So if the abuser is 18 or older, you would get what's called a protective order. And this is when there's been a sexual relationship, you have a child together, you're related by marriage or blood, um, and a protective order offers um, protection for up to a year. Peace orders are for any other type of dating relationship where they may not have had a sexual relationship, um, and that is protection for six months. Now, if the abuser is under the age of 18, then it goes through the juvenile justice system, and that's a juvenile protective, protective order, and that offers the same type of relief. Here are some of the resources in the county. I work again at the Montgomery County Family Justice Center. We can again help anyone ages 16 and older. If they are under the age of 16, we just need parental consent. Um, we offer again safety planning, that counseling. Um, we offer free legal representation for those protective order and peace order cases. There's also the Montgomery County Victim Assistance and Sexual Assault Program. They are able to help anyone ages 12 and older without parental consent. They offer therapy um, and other crisis interventions. Then of course, there's the crisis center, which is open again, 24 hours a day for any type of um, emergency or crisis counseling. And then of course, there's the national dating violence hotline as well for anyone that just wants to talk about what's going on, or it could be a parent or a friend calling them to say, hey, I'm worried about my friend or my daughter or my son, um, and they can get advice there as well. More, There's a lot, a lot, a lot of information um, at loveisrespect.org. There are some quizzes on there that kids can take about um, uh, if their relationship is healthy, if they're a good partner, they have a lot of great resources. I see a question um, in the chat. Um, how are the orders enforced or delivered to the abuser? So what happens is if it's a protective order or a peace order, um, the sheriff's office, the sheriff deputies go and they serve the order to the the abuser. So they, they are served with the order, they get a copy, and then um, there's a trial. There's a temporary order phase and a final protective order phase where they are, um, if it's granted, they are ordered to do those things. Same with um, the juvenile justice system. Then if the orders are violated, so if the abuser's over the age of 18 and the um, and they continue to harass or to, or to contact them, that becomes an arrestable offense and they can be arrested for that action. For juveniles, um, they would then come into the juvenile justice system and there would be um, ramifications um, through their process. Lastly, I wanted to talk to you about our Choose Respect program. Like I said, we go into classrooms and we do what's called Expect Respect. We have a festival every spring. Um, it's on April 7th this year at the Wheaton Recreation Center um, where we have games and food trucks and activities for students and for parents, and they can earn student service funding hours. We have programs for athletes. And lastly, we also have a video contest that is open right now. 
Um, students who enter the contest need to be in middle school or high school. They can earn 10 SSL hours for entering the contest if they follow the rules. And then we um, give out prizes um, at Respect Fest and first place gets $1,000. Second place gets seven hundred and fifty dollars. Third place gets five hundred dollars. And last year we had about three hundred entries, and we would love to see entries by um, by students at all the different schools. And I'm just going to show you the video that won last year. I asked you for money. Why do you never listen to me? You always wear the ugliest outfits on our dates. You need to buy a new wardrobe. Your friends post the most annoying pictures on Instagram. Unfollow them. If you don't share your location with me, I'm not going to love you anymore. If you want to be with me, you need to give me your password. Hey, I've noticed you've been missing school lately. I'm here if you need to talk to me. You deserve to feel safe and loved. What you went through was not your fault. I found some resources to help you. Thank you.